Hi there, Lindsay here, The Frugal Crafter. Today I have a quick review on the Mission Titanium gouache paint. And this is kind of a new to the market product. Um, a couple of years ago, Mission Gold, or Magello, the company that makes Mission Gold, Mission Silver, came out with Mission White class, which was a hybrid watercolor. It was a opaque watercolor, kind of hybrid watercolor gouache type of product. And um, it was a affordable, good quality product, but it had a lot of fugitive pigments. Now Mission Gold, or Magello, I should say, has come out with their Mission Titanium gouache, which is, um, again, a, pro a hybrid product. It's um, it's uh, a little more transparent than gouache, but a little bit more opaque than watercolor. And here is a swatch set here. Now these were sent to me by a student, Laura. She uh, swatched them out for me. I did a, another glazing swatch on top and she sent me this cute little palette with the paints dried down. So I have not used them from tubes, but um, she didn't mention any, any binder separation. And I did find a review, a written review by Kimberly Crick, who's one of my favorite product reviewers. And she did not mention binder separation in her review and she's really thorough. So um, I will link to her written review as well because um, she's kind of the uh, the guru when it comes to really getting in the weeds, checking out light fastness and um, getting all the minutia of a watercolor set. And this uh, palette here is from Arts to Embers. I just want to kind of put that so you can see it. That's their card. And they are an Etsy seller that does 3D printed little um, watercolor palettes. This is called the Perfect Pencil Case Watercolor Palette. And it comes with a swatch card that I filled out with the gouache here. Um, so looking at the colors, they're very vibrant, which they're a little more vibrant. They look more like watercolors than gouache to me. They're quite translucent, as you can see by the black mark here. Um, and even with my glazing layers, it still is not fully opaque, even on the white. So this is definitely not the paint you want if you want a really opaque product. Now, if I hold this to the light, can you see, and I just hit this with a heat tool to make sure everything's absolutely dry. Can you see almost a, like a wet look on some of those, the, the glazing swatches? Um, so there is a bit of a shine if you're applying this product thickly, which could be a problem if you're trying to get an opaque look to your paints. Um, so the pros on this is they dry down beautifully. This is the palette. Um, I've had it for over a month and she sent it to me dry. Um, they rewet really well. I can see I'm already making divots in the paint just from the paint one painting and the swatches that I did today. So I definitely think you're you're using a lot more of this than you would like say their Mission Gold series watercolor. But um, very vibrant, very easy to rewet, no cracking in the in the um, in the pans, which is a problem that gouache has is that it will tend to kind of shrink and crack and fall out of your palettes if you try to stick it into a palette and dry it for like travel use and whatnot. Um, these rewet really, really well. They, with any gouache, if you dry it down or rewet it, it is less opaque. I can't speak for how this like paints out fresh from the tube, but I think it's going to be a lot more like watercolor than like a, um, more like a gouache. So this would be a good option if you, you want to have, dip your feet into gouache, but you really love watercolor and maybe you want to carry a tube of white with you just to opacify it if need be. Maybe, um, the, I did mix some of the white in and it did a great job at opacifying and lightening up colors, but it wasn't the most opaque. And I'll show you here in my painting. I had to go in with a gel pen to get my really opaque colors. So let me just bring this over here. Um, so like this reflection here, I did with the, the full strength white that I could get with my brush and the um, the cake. And it did rewet really well. It had a nice like creamy paint there, but still as it dried, it got, um, it got translucent. So I had to go in with a gel pen where I wanted a really bright white. Uh, effect. Of course, I could use the white of the paper if I'm working on white paper, but if you are trying to go in after the fact and add highlights, um, you're going to want to use that, use a gel pen or something a little bit more opaque. Um, just seeing if I did get a good, I think, I think that highlight and that highlight was done with the gouache. So I was able to get a little dab of it that, that dried, you know, opaque enough, but spreading out a stroke like that, it went a little um, translucent on me and I had to go in and get my really bright highlights with a, um, with a gel pen. But as far as working with them, they were really nice. I did notice a larger wet to dry shift, like in this background wash. It was much more vibrant before it dried um, than I would even suggest watercolor would be, but it, it's these do go on really bright and you think that you've got a lot of color there, but as it dries, it does seem to dull down a little bit. Um, one thing I liked about this is that you can dry it down in the palette, whereas like the Paul Rubens, um, 
their opaque watercolor did get a little bit kind of cracky as you dried it out and there was major binder separation in the Paul Rubens opaque watercolors although the Paul Rubens opaque watercolors were more matte and more opaque so you know I think I think when you go with a more opaque product it's just a little bit more chalky and it and more matte and it doesn't have the uh, humectants in there which is probably honey and uh, glycerin because the um, the Mission Gold products the Magella products use honey as a humectant to like draw the water out of the air and keep the um, the paints moist so I think that that's why we're getting that that kind of shininess to it and the translucency to it is the addition of the humectant because when I've added glycerin or honey to my gouache paints to keep it from falling out of a um, of a palette it does get almost it gets more transparent and it does get a little bit of a shine to it so um, it's a little bit like what do you want what's your most important qualification in your paint and that's that's kind of how you got to decide what brand you want to go with I think now as far as price these are uh, right now they're kind of expensive and they're only available in a set of 34 uh, 34 or 36 either 34 or 36 I think it's 34 um, and on Amazon they're about 245 for that set of 35 paints now in contrast you can get the Magello uh, gold the mission gold pure pigment set of 34 for a hundred and thirty something dollars right now which is a, a phenomenal deal I love the mission gold paints the Amazon prices are amazing and I haven't had any binder separation in my mission gold paints that's neither here nor there I, I think mission gold is just a really tough value to beat if you're buying them on Amazon but there these are you know expensive on Amazon right now I have seen them on eBay for hundred and twenty four dollars for the set and that's much more reasonable and I think that's a fair price but then again you really have to look at your stash and say is this really that new of a thing is this really going to if I already have a bunch of watercolors that are dried down and I have some gouache is this really going to reinvent the wheel is it going to do anything for me um, I think this product is kind of the best for uh, you want to travel dry gouache palette that will also work as a watercolor if you thin it down you want a versatile product like that um, I still think you're going to need to add a tube of a like a nice opaque gouache and there's a lot of good brands out there M Graham's one um, Re Renaissance actually makes a good large tube of white gouache um, yeah I mean do you want it or you know actually I just got a, a tube a 100 ml pouch of the Anagani white gouache I love their white gouache that's in the jelly cup set so but it's definitely not for travel you know it just depends on really what you want um, are you a paint collector and you just love everything Mission Gold or Magello and you want to add that to your collection well I don't think it's gonna be a problem it seems to dry out really well in pans and if you want to work with a dry gouache that's awesome um, now you can't get them open stock so that is a that's a problem I don't know if it's just an American thing we can't get them open stock or if like if you were in South Korea if you could just walk into your local art shop and buy one tube of paint to refill your favorite color I don't know they're not open stock here so it's kind of like the same deal as the Paul Rubens opaque watercolors they're in a set only um, Shinhan Pass is the other brand that makes and a hybrid gouache and I haven't used them so I can't speak for them but I have heard they're pretty good um, and I'm not sure if you can get open stock on those or not but I, I also like Shinhan products they're, they're very similar to Mission Gold in my opinion or to Magello in my opinion but um, that's another option I think it's a more expensive option so uh, but I don't know $245 for that set does seem a little bit high considering there are um, you know there are other options if I was going to take that much that kind of money to spend I would say get the regular mission gold watercolors and you know maybe add a tube of white gouache to them probably a different brand just so that's a little bit more opaque um, because yeah the, the shininess there is a little off-putting because with gouache you probably use it thicker you know what I mean if you're going to have that shine that really defeats the purpose of having an opaque matte paint because um, it's neither opaque really or matte and uh, that's kind of a bummer what these really remind me of though and it's probably something you have in your stash because it's a very popular brand of paint these remind me a lot of the Kiritaki Ganzi Ganzai Tambi paints um, either both working from them rewetting them painting with them layering with them they remind me so much of the Ganzai Tambi paints and even to right down to the finish that you get in a thick layer so I would say um, if you have the Ganzai Tambi paints I would just stick with those or I would work with them a lot and see what you think maybe like yeah I wish I could 
have a tube version of this, or maybe I want to get a tube version to refill the pans that I have. That would probably be, be a good option if you love that paint and you want a more, maybe more light fast version of it. Uh, because I was wondering what's the difference between the Mission White class hybrid gouache that was popular that came out a few years back and the new Mission Titanium class. And the big difference seems to be the fact that they're using more light fast pigments here than they were in the white, in the uh, white class version. So Let's look through here. We've got Titanium White, PW6, that's tried and true. We've got Joan Brilliant, which is PO13, is that PO13 or 73? Uh, I think it's 73. Um, PY65 and PW6, the Lemon Yellow PY3, Permanent Yellow Light PY154, Permanent Yellow PY65, Orange PO73, PY65. Um, these stars here, those are the light fast ratings and the, um, I think they're the light fast ratings. She's got two whites and they each have a different rating. So maybe not, maybe they're series numbers. I did look on the listing and pretty much they all either had a five or four light fast rating, which is like the highest that Magello gives. They do a one to five star rating. Um, I'm just gonna look through uh, now on, I did look at Kimberly Crook's review and she did highlight a few pigments that she considered to be a little bit iffy. Um, so I would definitely check that out because she's definitely a little bit more bullish on the ratings than I am as far as light fastness. Of course, with gouache, I'm usually using it in a sketchbook, so I'm not too perturbed by weird pigments because it's going to be closed in a sketchbook, but if you're going to hang it on the wall or maybe use it in conjunction with your watercolors or with this, you don't really need to use them in conjunction with watercolors. You can use them as watercolors, but that also um, begs the point that if you're going to be thinning this down, when you thin down a paint, you do reduce its light fastness. And if the light fast ratings were done in mass tone or what you typically use a gouache for, they may be a little bit less than what is, um, than what is stated. If you're going to thin it down like watercolor, I mean. Uh, let's see, PR-176, um, you've got the PR-122 again. I think that's one that she said that she didn't think was a very good, um, a reputable color. So, you know, maybe, maybe pull the colors that you feel are a little hinky. Uh, nothing here really gives me vibes that it might be, um, it might be bad. Uh, oh, PV-15. No, I think those are alright. PV23, PV15, I think those were okay. Um, yeah, I mean, this PV27, which is your Prussian Blue, which can go, um, and that's in that color too, that can kind of uh, brown out if exposed to too much light, but then recharges once you put it away from light for a while, it will recharge. Um, yeah, I'm thinking these all look pretty stable and pretty customary. The uh, the basic gray has is probably the most opaque out of all these colors, which is ironic because it's got uh, PBK7 and titanium white, and titanium white is way less um, opaque than this, but maybe it's just because the value of it is darker, so it maybe blends in with a line a little bit more. The black does seem to be very opaque as well. Um, and this brown is gorgeous, this uh, PBR25 known as benzene dyed brown. I have that in um, in Turner as well. It's a gorgeous, just transparent red brown color. It's so pretty. Uh, but yeah, these colors are gorgeous. Um, I'd probably use them more like watercolors to avoid the shine. They'd be kind of fun to take out to do some paintings. I didn't notice any muddiness as I was layering colors up here. It was, they were fun to paint with. They were easy to paint with. And I think they'd be great for sketchbook work for that reason, just because it's so easy just to, oh shoot, I need to get my white and put some white in there. Oh, I need to layer up. I didn't get any like muddiness or unpleasant mixing. Things layered up really well with this. And sometimes with gouache, you can lift up. If you use it really watery, I feel like you can use this more watery like you can watercolor and not have an issue with lifting, which is unusual for, for like a gouache-like or an opaque watercolor. Um, yeah. I would definitely have a white gel pen or a white paint pen or a tube of really opaque white gouache to go with it. But if you're curious, I think the quality is really nice. And it's just like, you know, what are the characteristics you want in a paint? Honestly, that's what it boils down to. You can see how well it dried down. This, did I tell you this is from Arts to Embers? This, yeah, I did tell you that already. Um, yeah, there's really not that much to say. I can't obviously comment on the quality of the tubes, but it, just going by other products that I purchased from Magello Mission Gold and Mission Silver, I have no qualms about their quality. Their quality is beautiful. So this seems to be, you know, no exception. Um, 
it's just kind of like a specific thing that I don't think would benefit everybody. So that's why I wanted to kind of put those caveats out there. But as far as quality, I think it's really good. I'll type out all of my pros and cons in the video description so it's a little bit more concise and you can kind of um, be refreshed and weigh it against the things you already have. Like I said, if you already have the Gensai Tanvi and you're not necessarily, you know, hyped up on having a really light fast version of it, you could just stick with those. But if you're like, I love my Gansai Tambi, I just wish it was more light fast, then maybe pick up a set of this and refill your pans with that and uh, carry on as usual because you're going to find the painting experience to be very similar in my opinion. But you can let me know what you think in the comments below. Have you used this paint? If you have, I would absolutely love it if you left a comment let me know what you think because uh, there's really not a lot of information in English out about these paints. There's some videos in Korean but um, I can't understand them. So if you've got some input on this, I would love to hear about it. And if you've used both the white class, which I have not used, and the titanium class, and you want to compare, that would be really helpful too, because there might be some people that have the white class, and they're wondering if they want to um, buy the titanium class to replace their white class as they use them up, or it just, you know, swap them out. I love the edges. I love the edges there. As far as flow, I think the, they flow very similar to their watercolors, to the Mission Gold watercolors, which aren't the most flowy watercolors in the world, but they definitely flow like watercolor, like like um, they flow like an Eastern watercolor, not like a super big whoosh, but they have like that typical watercolory flow. I don't know if there's ox gall in them or not, but they, um, you know, they work like watercolors, and I do like the edge. I do like that I don't seem to get like a, I'll, I can get a nice hard edge, but I don't get like a halo. It doesn't seem to push the pigment out to the edge like sometimes you get with watercolor. They're a very easy to use paint, but I'm using them more as watercolor and I layered up to get more of a gouache effect, but they're definitely not what I would reach for if I really wanted the gouache experience. I would go for, um, I would go for either a tube gouache or a jelly gouache for that, but hey. Um, just know you will be getting tubes and you have to put them in a palette or use them fresh from the tube, whatever you like. You could put them on a plate and reactivate them as needed, just like you could with any gouache. Um, I think the big benefit to these is, is you want a, a gouache that you can put in a palette and, and dry down and have portable or just have more convenient because honestly, I use my jelly gouache because I can take the lid off and have all my paints ready to go. Unscrewing tubes are not my favorite thing, so I'm kind of lazy when it comes to that, and uh, maybe you are too. So if you have any questions, you can go ahead and post them in the comments below. Uh, I'll answer what I can, and if you've used this product and you want to jump in and answer any questions, please feel free. I think that's how we grow a robust community, and that's how we avoid buying things that aren't going to suit us, and we buy the things that are really suited to our artistic journey, because nobody likes to waste money on stuff they're not going to use. Anyway, I want to thank Laura for sending me this sample. This was really generous of you, and I appreciate it. And I want to thank you for watching. Please give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. And until next time, happy crafting. Bye.